Thank you, Tim. Uh, good morning to the elders, uh, to the chiefs, and to you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I was honored to be asked to make a presentation today, and uh, it will be short and very much to the point. Before getting into that, though, I want to tell you that I was uh, grateful to be reminded by uh, Chief, uh, Vice Chief Joseph that I am a treaty person, that you're all treaty people. And I know I'm off topic, but I think it's important to observe that our government, our federal government, has for the last 130 years refused to implement the solemn treaties that they entered into in the 1870s. And I, as a citizen of this country, am ashamed of that, and I hope that at some point we will get a federal government who has the sense and the honor to implement the treaties in the way that they were intended to be implemented at the time that they were negotiated. Now let me get back on topic. This is an enormously complex problem that we're discussing today. I recall in this very room back in the early 90s we had a, a conference on Aboriginal justice. Many of you were at it. And it was an important conference because it provided us with a large body of literature that pointed the way very clearly to a number of important transformations that ought to take place in the justice system. In my opinion, too few of those have actually seen the light of day, but at least it got us thinking and got us on a path which I think will eventually lead to significant transformations. I use that I use that term rather than uh, changes or reforms in light of the discussion that took place in the first panel this morning. My role in the system these days has to do with civilian oversight. Uh, I've been the, uh, the, the public complaints investigator since July of this year under a program that was set up in amendments to the, or in the, in the enactment of the Police Act, the reenactment in 1990, which established the office of the public complaints investigator with a mandate to monitor the handling of public complaints and ensure that they are handled in a manner consistent with the public interest. And that program affects all municipal police forces in this province, including, of course, Saskatoon, Regina, Prince Albert, Moose Jaw, and other cities. The, uh, uh, the, invest the, the investigations that we monitor and oversee are, for the most part, conducted by the police service concerned. And I'm going to be dealing with that in a few moments, but that is the way that the situation uh, is handled at the present time. We monitor those investigations we carefully review the results. Very often we require further investigations to take place and we report on the matter to the, uh, the chief of the police service uh, concerned. Now, when I came on the scene in July, I found that there was a process underway led by Doug Moan and the Department of Justice to review this method of handling uh, public complaints to see whether improvements were possible that could make the office work in the way in which it was intended. And I was very pleasantly surprised to uh, find that all of the major police, municipal police services in the province were represented in that process, as well as uh, by Vice Chief Joseph on behalf of the FSIN and a representative of the uh, uh, Métis Family and Community Justice Services, and that this process had gone a, a long distance towards developing a new model of uh, civilian oversight of complaints against police. And I want to describe that to you uh, this morning. Two problems have emerged over the years in the work that has been done in uh, my office. The problems are, first of all, that Indian and Métis people are not making many complaints. 
That was certainly the case before the special investigation unit was set up in the FSIN. The situation has changed because many complaints, as the vice chief has told you, have actually come into the special investigation unit and are being dealt with. But very few have come directly to the office of the investigator. So that was one problem. We learned, of course, when the special investigation unit was set up that there were a lot of complaints out there, a lot of them, 4,000, the vice chief tells us, which resulted in the setting up of 900 files. And a file wouldn't be set up unless it was clearly a complaint that ought to be looked at. So the complaints were out there, but they just weren't coming through. And you have to ask yourself, why? And the reasonable conclusion, the only conclusion possible, is that Indian and Métis people did not have confidence in the existing office and did not choose to approach the office to deal with the complaints that they had about alleged police misconduct. The second problem, which has been referred to this morning, is that people are very skeptical about police investigating themselves. Now, in our experience, there probably isn't a real basis for that view in most cases, but nonetheless, it is a very widely held view, not only among Indian and Métis people, but among the non-Aboriginal population as well. They're just not buying it. And that was the second problem that was identified during this process that I've described, and we've attempted to deal with that. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Thank you. 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 Thank you